is we're going to embed the bottom friction into the pressure plate. So we're going to already cut, we're going to cut a certain amount off of here so that we still meet our, our required engagement with the case splines. But then we're going to sink this first friction down into the, the pressure plate. Some other builders are getting four intermediate frictions in their uh, 4R100s. Most of them, at least all that I have seen, have been using, they've been cheating, they've been using thinner steels. So the 4R100 uses eighth inch intermediate steels. They're 125 thousandths. The E4OD, uses a thinner one. So what they're doing is they're swapping out the, the heavier eighth inch steels for these thinner steels. And you do that enough times, then you can get a whole nother friction in there. But they're advertising full thickness frictions, but what they're not telling you is that you do not have full thickness steels. So we don't do that here. We use full thickness steels and full thickness frictions. So I wanted to shed some light on how to get full, four full thickness frictions and four full thickness steels into your 4R100. Now the factory intermediate pressure plate is about 325, 325 thousandths. So we know that works. Um, question is, how much can we cut off of that, if anything? Well. To figure that out, we got to look at our engagement inside here. We have two things going on. The steels, they engage with these splines, sometimes called lugs, on the inside of the case. So we need to make sure we engage those. And we need to make sure that the frictions engage the intermediate outer race. So it's possible to have not enough engagement. So let's take a look. Well, from simple math, We know, and by the way, for this video, I'm using used steels and some new paper frictions. I'm not using GPZs because this is just for mock-up and I don't want to mess those up. So what we want to, basically what we want to do is add a friction and a steel. And we, need, we know we need to do something somewhere else. So a friction and a steel combined is about 205 thousandths, a little bit less than 205 thousandths. So we have to find 205 thousandths of an inch somewhere to get this extra friction and steel in. Well, right off the bat, you can say, well, let's replace this 325 thousandths thick pressure plate with two eighth inch plates and our fourth friction. That's a little bit more than 325 thousandths. We could make that work. And then that'll, uh, that'll give us a stack up of almost the same. Well, let's see. Let's see why this does not work. Well, for one thing, we're not gonna meet, we're not gonna make any engagement with the case splines with that bottom eighth inch plate. So that's not, that's no good. That's not tall enough. Aside from that, the friction, it does engage the outer roll, outer race, but let's take a look at how much. So here's a boroscope. I'm looking at, I'm sitting on top of that eighth inch steel down there, and we can see that it does not engage the case lugs. Those are the case lugs there. And I can just, You can see me spinning. So there I'm spinning the that eighth inch steel. So we can see that it doesn't it doesn't engage. Now on the inner diameter here, it's hard to get, but there we see there's the outer race right there. Now you can see that there is a height that we need to go above that eighth inch steel before we engage those splines. So those are two things we need to worry about. 
So that bottom steel, I've already measured this. There's thousands underneath this spline here. So if our spline, if our steel was thousands thick, it would not engage. So how much engagement do we need? Well, we know that the E4OD steels are 78 thousandths thick. So that's much less engagement. Now that the, the friction, the pressure plate, it's not gonna experience any more rotational force than the than the steels. And you know, we're looking at like this this sort of knocking force against the aluminum lugs. Is it gonna do any damage to them? Uh, the answer is gonna be probably no. Um, and we know it doesn't do that at 78 of an inch thick. So right off the bat, thousandths, we know we can cut off of that pressure plate and be safe. We'll still engage our our splines here in the case, and that'll set us up for uh, friction engagement on the intermediate outer race. So we're looking at, like I said, we wanna add a friction and a steel. That's 205, 200 thousandths, between 200 and 205 thousandths. We also know that this thing has got super sloppy tolerances and we, we tighten those up everywhere, but this is gonna be an opportunity to do that here in the intermediate with uh, some custom cutting. Here's to show you a difference between uh, the GPZs and the Raybestos paper gaskets. I'm using the paper gaskets for mock-up just in case they get messed up. Um, but here's a here's a here's an older friction that's been bounced around a little bit. So the frictions, they're both about 78 thousandths thick. The difference is Raybestos uses a thicker steel core. So the paper steel core it's 35 thousandths. The GPZ is 40 thousandths. So what that means is on the paper, the paper friction, there's a 35 thousandths steel plate, and then it's got about 21 thousandths of paper on each side. Ray Bustos, uh, sorry, the GPZ has a thicker steel plate and a little bit less material on each side because it's the same thickness. So why is that important? Well, what we're gonna do to get some more height is we're gonna embed the bottom friction into the pressure plate. So we're gonna already cut, we're gonna cut a certain amount off of here so that we still meet our, our required engagement with the case splines. But then we're gonna sink this first friction down into this, the pressure plate. So how far are we gonna go? Well. We don't want to go far because we want to be able to maximize the use of every single friction in this pack. So if this if this steel inside of this friction, this steel ring, is 35 thousandths, well, we don't want to go any more than thousandths because then there's a there's a potential for us to get. Now imagine if this was embedded in that pressure plate, if that friction got worn out, we could wind up with steel on steel here and nothing in between. And then that would just, you know, ruin ruin our whole theme of reliability and longevity here. So how far can we go? Well, we're gonna go with the thinner steel because down the road in 10 years, some other guy might be rebuilding this and he may not use GPZ frictions. He might use these paper ones, not knowing what's going on inside here and we don't want to we don't want to screw the next guy so we're going to build it we're going to cut it like we're going to use paper gaskets even or paper frictions even though we're not so this would be 35 thousand so we're only going to take when we embed it now we know that with our factory three friction stack that winds up sitting about 110, 120 thousandths below the top of this, the case splines. Now the reason why that's important is because the intermediate piston sits right on here. So if we start bringing, if we start moving this up, we're gonna have to cut off of the bottom of the intermediate piston. But we don't know how much yet, and we don't know how much we can come up yet. Because we still gotta worry about that top friction engaging in the in the outer race here so let's see what it looks like so
So here's the factory pack minus the very last steel. So we can see that we have good engagement here on this top friction. And that's what we need to worry about. Now the top steel doesn't engage on that outer race. It only engages with the case and it's got plenty of engagement there. So all things we need to consider in this, it's actually got about a hundred and like I said, 120, 110 thousandths to spare before we run into problems with the center support, which we don't want to do. So we're going to try to avoid that. All right, so we have, we have a good idea of what we want to cut off of our pressure plate. I've got a, I've got a bunch of extras here. I'm going to go put this on the lathe and cut it down and see if we can mock something up. All right, so we've got about just as much as we can cut off of our pressure plate. Now, if you look here, I'm going to try to give you this weird angle. Hopefully, you can see here uh, the, the recess. It isn't much, but it's just about all we can do. And that's so that we can use 100% of this bottom friction. This bottom friction won't wear out before all the others, in other words. Um, and that's important because you want them all to wear out together. So let's put this in there and stack it up and see what it looks like. All right, so here we are with everything. This is our, our customized clutch pack, intermediate with everything but the top steel on. Again, I think I already mentioned I'm using used steels just for the mock-up. They're, they're the same thickness. So we can tell our final friction has, has good engage. It's fully engaged, and it's got some room to spare there on those teeth. If we uh, measure that. There's at least another, you know, for it to move around because that's what this does. So let's put the last steel on. And we're right. We are below the top surface of those case blinds. So we got a little bit of room there, which is good. So we raised up this top steel at least a thousandths of an inch <clears throat> from where it was. So now we know, okay, well that's gonna impact, that's gonna impact the intermediate piston. So we're gonna have to cut some off of that intermediate piston. How much can we cut off of that intermediate piston? So the next thing that goes in is the center support. The center support this part here sits on the outer race, the intermediate outer race. So we don't have to worry about interference with the steels because we know that our lowest surface of this center support is already, eh, it's probably right at the surface of the, of the steel, but because, because of the design of this center support, there's gonna be a lot of clearance in here to clear the, to clear the steels. Um, that center support has been machined, so we're going to put our spline in. I took the seals off because I don't, we don't need to worry about that here. We're just mocking up. All right, we're all aligned with our bolt holes. We haven't done anything to affect the location of the center support. So now you can see here. This is the intermediate piston, and these, these surfaces here pass right through the center support and sit right on top of the intermediate steels, just like that. So I'm sitting right on top of the intermediate steels. All right, I'm going to put an intermediate overdrive piston assembly in here, and we're going to take a look at our alignment. Okay, here we are with the uh, intermediate return spring compressed. We cannot get the snap ring in the groove. Now we already, you know, just like we thought, we already knew that. The reason for that is our steels are higher. Now they're interfering with the location of the 
intermediate pistons. So what do we have to do? We have to machine off of the intermediate piston here. So we're gonna figure out just how much we can go and figure out how much we need to go. And we're gonna see if it all jives. All right, so here we are. Return spring is compressed. Snap ring is seated properly. The feed bolt lines up perfectly. Let's do an air check, see what that looks like. And we can compare it to what an air check looks like on a uh, factory three friction, three steel pack. And this is with the three factory friction packs, standard pressure plate and all that. Here's the air check. Now here's an air check with our custom pressure plate and four friction pack. All right, well, there you have it. I mean, this is, this is pretty much in the books. Uh, we're gonna do a final grind on that pressure plate. We'll probably take another thou or two off of that. We'll measure for our final tolerance. We may tweak the piston just a tad to get it to where we're at. We tightened up all these tolerances. The Ford ones are very open and very sloppy. You can even hear that when you're doing an air check if you hear like a really, really loud thump. You know, that's because something is, is got a little bit too much, uh, too much room to breathe in there. So we'll tighten this up. We'll get it to where we like it. And this is how you get four full th thickness frictions and four full thickness steels into the 4R100.